In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Father, I ask you for the Holy Spirit. Help us to hear this gospel well, to hear it with our heart, our soul, with our life, that your word can arrive into our heart and bring the fruits, the fruits that will last. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Today for the Feast of the Holy Trinity, uh, this very short Gospel is proclaimed. It's short, but it's rich. The first things that struck me in this Gospel is that when Jesus is uh, on the mountain, right before he leaves them, he appears on the mountain, risen Jesus, and some of the disciples worship him and some are doubting. Why do they doubt it? And we know that sometimes disciples had a hard time to recognize Jesus after resurrection. He has been transformed and changed. He was different. So, but regardless of what Jesus did, how he preached, and how many times they heard that he prophesied that he would die and be risen, some are still doubting in that moment. And it shows us a lot about the faith. In modern world especially, we are trusting more and more the reason and the intellect. Because of our great successes in science, we build amazing machines, phones, internet, instant communications, we fly into space, and science is reliable intellectually, we could say. You can understand the rules, you can do experiment, and this experiment will repeat itself, and it's always the same. Once you understand something, you have a control over it, you can use it. And perhaps often we fall into the trap that we feel secure only and we trust only if we understand what's going on. So if I have a relationship with God, I would like to understand what's going on, what God wants from me, what's happening right now, where I am, why am I suffering, uh, how long will I live, why he created me. And many of those questions cannot be answered in the way science works. There are no clear answers. I remember disciples, one day they tell Jesus, now we believe in you because you speak clearly. Before, we had a hard time believing because Jesus was not speaking clearly. And unfortunately, our relationship with God cannot be based on understanding. We can see that in a relationship with children. Children, uh, often, when they are small, they ask you questions. And let's say you, as a father, you tell your children, don't eat chocolate. And the kids will start to ask, why? Why? Why I cannot eat? I love it. It's good for me. And you could see that when you're explaining to children why they cannot eat chocolate, soon or later, you have a hard time. Why? Because children are not capable to understand nutrition how the cells in our body works, energy, how the chemical reaction transforming food into your body, and so on. Sooner or later, the dad would say, okay, I just tell you, don't eat it. It's not good for you. But if the child is wise, if the child knows that dad loves him or her, the child will listen to the parents through the trust knowing that the parents don't want to hurt them. And our relationship, faith with God, is founded like that. I know the Father who loves me, who takes care of me. I don't understand what he is doing. I don't understand what's happening in the world. I don't understand everything that happened to me or what's going on. But it's not important to understand. Or 
I cannot be only feeling safe and good if I grasp what's going on. No, I am called to trust God. Trust him with all I've got because of experience I've had. And one of the things that's very difficult to understand is the concept or reality, that's a better word, reality of Trinity. Our God is one, but he's in three persons. I remember once I had a, a talk about faith with a Muslim and he was attacking me very strong saying, so how many gods you have? One or three? And he would, uh, he would kind of ridicule my faith saying, you know, children in a grade two, they know that one is not the same as three. Either three or one. Make up your mind. Well, our mind is made up by what God told me. I am a child. I understand how one God can be three person and God can be Father, Son and the Holy Spirit and is the same but different and, and more, the more I think about it, more I am lost. But I believe it. I believe it because God told me that's who he is and I trust God. And there's another reason why I believe it. Because if God is Trinity, it means that the very essence of God, you could say, is that God is a communal being. There's a community within God, that the Father loves the Son, and this love is a Holy Spirit between them. So God is a community, and if we have been created in his image, and if we are called today by Jesus to go and announce God and to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit into that reality, it means that we, as a human beings, we are not ourselves fully unless we belong to community. It's a community, a relationship with others that shape me. In this world, you can have illusion that it's not the truth. You know, if I am Bartek and I have lots of friends and then I move out and I don't talk to anyone and I live on the island, it's still me, it's still Bartek, you know, the same person. But from God's perspective, it's not so. If I run away from people, if, because people hurt me, I don't like them, they are annoying, they are burdensome, and I have fun on my own, on the island, alone, I will slowly lose my humanity. Because I have been created in the image of God, and I've been created to have relationships, to have friends, to have brothers, to have sisters, and to love them the way the Father loves his Son, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course. That's why the best image of Trinity, the best image of God on earth here, you can find in a group of people that truly love themselves. If there is a group, church, brothers and sisters, Christians, who because of God only, they don't love each other because they like each other, because they love spend time together, because I don't know what, or because the other people treat you well. You love others because of God. And the others love you because of God. And this love cannot be broken, cannot be crushed, destroyed, or scratched. It's a love of God that is eternal. It's like a rock. So if this rock is foundation of my Christian community, then I can see God, and then I can see Trinity present on earth. That's why I believe also in that, because I've seen communities that strong in love of God. And that's also our mission. That's the meaning why we are here on earth. In order to, I think, modern time more than ever. If we preach Jesus and we talk about Jesus, people do not want to listen anymore. They, they think they know everything about Jesus and they are not interested or bored by the topic. But there's one way to announce God, to be like God. You have a group of people who follow Christ and they love each other the way no one else does, then God is present there. God is announced. And people will follow it. I believe it with all my heart that people will follow because there's a deep hunger in our hearts for meaning and for love. And because we live in this world that is wounded, where there's many sins and abuses and people using each other and love for money and everything else, we are skeptical and doubtful about the love. We need to taste it. We need to touch it. And we need people who show it and demonstrate it. And we as Christians, we have this mission. 
demonstrated to the entire world the love of God by creating these communities of people who love each other the way the Father loved his Son and loves his Son and the way Son loves the Father. Holy Father, I pray for all the of those brothers and sisters who listen uh, to this video, especially for the community spread around Yukon, that you can create them in the image of Holy Trinity, that they love each other without limits, without jealousy, with uh, unlimited and infinite forgiveness and care when each of them is willing up to offer his or her life for his brother or sister. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 